Good morning and welcome. This is NDTV Profit. My name is Alex Matthew and you're watching All You Need. Apologies, you're watching Ask Profit. I was recalling my first show of the day. This show gets you answers to all of your stock-related questions, whether they're fundamental or technical in nature. And if you've got questions for us, you can send them to us on that number that you see on your screen right now. Let's uh, take you through where the markets are right now. And it's a very narrow range once again for the Nifty 50, but we were more or less looking at a similar scenario in trade yesterday at this time. And we all know what happened towards the end of the session. What a romping rally you saw for the Nifty 50, ending at a fresh all-time high. Currently, you're seeing cuts of about a tenth of a percent or thereabouts. Not too much to speak of. The real action seems to be in the broader end of the market, where you're seeing gains for both the mid-cap mid -cap as well as the small-cap index. The mid-cap index up as much as 0.7% uh, or 8%, and you have the small cap index is up about 0.9%. The market breadth tilted in favor of the advances and quite uh, strong the market breadth. Uh, as many as 1,600 advances at this juncture on the, Nifty, on the uh, broader markets. Uh, let's take a look at the sectoral indices and most of them are in the green. But once again, you're seeing an underperformance by a few uh, names that are familiar at this point. The Nifty Bank is once again underperforming. It's more or less flat at this juncture. Even the financial name is not doing too much. The stocks that are moving are the Realty Pack, up as much as 1.8% or thereabouts. The Metal uh, Counter is also doing quite well, up as much as 1% or thereabouts. FMCG is underperforming. Incidentally, do check if you've got an allocation to the Bajaj Housing uh, IPO. Uh, that is uh, That information is out today. And that's a listing to watch out for. Everybody's looking forward to it based on the kind of oversubscription that you saw in trade. But there's one stock that we're focusing in on at the start, and this is a counter that is buzzing, HG Infra. It's uh, up quite considerably. It's up as much as 4.4%, very close to the high point of the day. It's a significant order win for the company, over 700 crore rupees for a company that has a market capitalization of about 10,000 crore rupees. We've got Mihika joining in to tell you about those two orders and what it means for the company as a whole. Mika, what can you tell us about the latest? AJ Infra is buzzing. It reached an intraday high of 5.1% actually and the stock is up over 6% in the last five days itself. Now the company has received two um, order wins in the last three days of to worth a total of 1400 crores. Now the order it got yesterday on September 12th it was a letter of award from the Central Railway and the award, uh, contract value is at 716.11 crore. Now the company is going to construct a new um, BG line between the Dhule to Nardana section and the construction period is set at th 30 months. And the second order it got on September 9th was from the Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways. Now the order value was at 781.11 crores and it was for the upgradation of an existing six-lane road at uh, of NH47. And they're going to upgrade the road of a total um, length of 10.63 kilometer. The construction period for this order is at 2.5 years. Got it. All right. Thanks so much, Mika, for getting us those details. Let's uh, check in with our experts and see what they have to say about EDG Infra. Not a very large counter, but still sizable at 10,000 crore rupees of market capitalization. We've got Vinit Bolinjkar, who's the head of research at Ventura Securities, and Rajat Bose, SEBI registered research analyst, joining. And thank you so much, gentlemen, for taking the time. And happy Friday to you. I'll come to you first, Vinit, uh, on EDG Infra. Do you have a view? If so, what is it? So, you know, we are very constructive on this company and expect that, uh, you know, their order book will grow handsomely. And the testament is out in this order where they generated about 700 crores of orders from the railways. You know, we were actually building in about 100 to 120, uh, 1000 to 1200 crores of order wins every year for the next couple of years. And the fact that, you know, they have uh, got some very handsome orders indicates to us that, you know, the order book would get accelerated. And because of this, we are very uh, con confident that the company will do 15 to 16% top line growth with a equally mirrored uh, bottom line growth. The reason being that, you know, they have a very uh, EPC and asset light and a ham business model. And, uh, you know, because of, and we see that their margins, which are around 16%, can maybe shave off 30, 40 bips. But overall, a very constructive story. Uh, we, we are seeing a EPS of 115 rupees in FI27, and that gives you a, a you know adjusted PE of around uh, 13 times going forward. So I think a very good company to look at. 
and uh, you know we should see more infra getting accelerated as uh, you know the modi government 3.0 gets its tracks together yeah and that's despite uh, a gain of about 85% in 2024 so far it's still a buy based on the fundamentals based on what vinit is speaking about let's jump into the questions and by the way if you're tuning in for the first time i'd like to tell you to tell us what your name is as well as where you're tuning in from it'll help you when i read out your question we'll take the first question on tata power and this is a question from kabilan who's writing in from chennai he's bought uh, 1000 shares at and i do not know what the buy price is uh, but since he is not mentioned a time frame he's asking whether a hold or exit i would assume that he's in the green rajat what's the view on the charts it's so currently it's a hold because it is in a wedge bound situation the upper boundary is somewhere around 460 or so and the lower boundary as i can see is about 400 and currently it is 444 i would say put a stop loss below 430 and continue but if it fails to take out 460 decisively then exit just a quick view vinith on uh, tata power we were talking about the new ev policy by the government and there is also a mention of charging infrastructure and we were wondering how this would benefit the companies out there and tata power as a utility and a provider of electricity that is also getting into partnerships with the omcs to create charging infrastructure we were thinking would be one of the beneficiaries but i guess it would be a pittance compared to everything else that they're doing would you suggest a hold on fundamentals and buy on dips um uh, you know i would even recommend you to buy into the stock at current levels okay. i have a more macro reason for that is that if you look at data centers which are you know now being planned of 1 gigawatt capacities would mean a uh, tremendous uh, uh, sourcing of uh, green power and uh, tata has its own uh, you know uh, infrastructure for manufacturing solar cells and modules they are doing uh, rooftop solar they have a good case of uh, uh coal uh, they have coal mines so in a so very integrated uh, power company has got dnd projects also and i believe that you know you're getting everything packaged together and you also have plays on uh, ev charging etc uh, with also with uh, you know roof uh, rooftop solar coming in so i think this stock is not going to come down too much and uh, even buying at current levels is warranted Okay, fair point. Uh, NBCC is the next counter that we're talking about. Ravi Shankar from Kumbakonam is writing in, asking about it. He's bought at levels of one hundred and seventy-nine. He's got as many as two hundred shares. He's making a small profit. Uh, the stock is currently trading very close to the buy price. On the technicals, Rajat, how does it look? What are the prospects? Well, if you look at the uh, longer term chart, medium term chart, I would say that it is clearly on an uptrend. but in the short term it is actually seesawing uh, very recently it fall uh, fell from its all time high of around say 208 uh, came down to something like 170 at the moment it is 179 so one should put a stop loss below 170 and continue to hold on but if it fails to take out 200 mark then uh, seek an exit Uh, Chandra has got the next question asking about KEC bought 100 shares at a price of 1025 um shall should they wait or sell they they under undergoing a bit of a loss finit on the fundamentals view on KEC would you hold i uh, definitely i would hold and i would uh, i would look to buy also on declines or even average my position given the fact that we are very constructive on the order bookings of the company the company is not only looking at orders from the tnd space but they are also diversifying into civil projects railways uh, water projects and even road so you know we are seeing that the margin uptake should take place order book is very good uh, we have a buy recommendation on the stock uh, so that's the story all right uh, another stock and there are so many of them that have done incredibly well over the last year or so i'm looking at inox wind and uh, i see okay so it's listed 13th of september rajat do you have enough data on this to give us a view because we've got uh, 
A uh, question coming in from Sushil. I was writing in from Bellari. She's bought at levels of 158. The stock is currently trading at 250. 400% um, gain since listing. Would you hold on to this? What would you like to hear? <laughs> no, I would like to hear your view, Rajat. In my view, one should book profits. Actually, uh, this has been a vertical run. And uh, even in the recent past, the uh, move. Uh, has been pretty good. So, at least book part profits were getting a bounty. All right. So, that's the view on uh, a stock that is a multi-bagger, uh, to say the very least. ICICI Bank is the next counter that we're talking about. Uh, Matthew has got the question and he's looking for a relatively short time frame. But I will still go uh, to Vineet on the fundamentals. He's bought 300 shares of ICICI Bank at 1,247, which is the current market price right now. Uh, Vinny, there are some that would say that this is the most expensive uh, amongst the large private sector banks and they would be right based on the kind of run that they would uh, th that you've seen in the recent past and amidst a large underperformance of the banking space as a whole, would you still suggest that you hold on to this, add more to ICICI Bank or are there other better opportunities in the private banking space? So, you know, I'd like to qualify uh, my opinion that, you know, I my uh, opinion is to, you know, be underweight on uh, private banking stocks uh, because we think that the bull run is past its prime out here and a little bit of profit booking is warranted. Having said that, ICICI Bank is one of the best plays out here. And so if at all you want to have an exposure to private banks, ICICI Bank is the one to go. Okay. I will still go to you, Rajat, on the charts. Anything interesting that you're seeing in the in the charts for ICICI Bank? You can do two things. Uh, I mean, either of the two things. That is, you use your 20-day exponential moving average or you use the, the Fibonacci level of 1179. The 20-day moving average is around 1172. So I would say put a stop loss below 1170 and continue. And... This stock, even though it has appreciated quite a bit, it, its run is not that vertical even on a five-year chart. So probably you might see some amount of upside uh, is still left in this. So that's why I, I'm saying hold on to it with the stock below 117. Okay, hold is a view on ICICI Bank based on the technicals, but it's an avoid from the perspective of Vineet. Uh, Venkat has got the next question. Simplex Castings. He's bought a thousand shares at a price of 53 and the stock is currently trading at 286. So he's making a considerable profit on this and he's still got a long-term view. Vineet, view on Simplex Castings, it's not a very large company so I, I won't fault you for not having tracked it. 200 crore odd market capitalization. Any view on this? I think it should continue to hold because, you know, they are into the infra space. Uh, infra has got strong legs. Government focuses on infra. And, uh, you know, they will do really well. So, I think one should continue to hold this. Okay. Simplex castings. I do want to also take, Rajat, a view on the technicals. Anything that you see that uh, stands out to you? Another instance of a sharp run-up from the buy price. So, some, some money off the table? Yes, some money of the table is better done because uh, it is not so liquid because if you look at the trading in uh, right from April to, uh, say, August, uh, the trading was very thin. So I would suggest uh, booking part profits. And what is, what is it doing is that it goes to the day's low, then shoots up, and this has happened uh, uh, within the last 15 trading days at least four times. So this looks like an operator-driven stock. And I would say that at least uh, book part profits, some money off the table is definitely uh, warranted. Yeah, all right. Uh, not liking the look of the charts there for Rajat. Uh, let's talk about the next counter, which is Cochin Shipyard, another multi-bagger and a stock that has gained quite tremendously. Of course, it has had a bit of a torrid run having hit higher levels. But we've still got... Uh, We've got Rajesh, who's riding from Bengaluru, who's bought at levels of 1,700. He's in the green right now. Vineet on the fundamentals, he's got a long-term view and he's seeking a long-term view on this particular counter. How does it look? Valuations are very demanding. Mm. And, uh, 
you know, better exposures would be Zen Technologies, Himachal Futuristic, which is seeing the onset of defense capabilities come in. So these are some of the two counters that I would like to recommend in, in place of Cochin Shipyards. Okay. All right. Uh, Lotus Chocolate, I, I, I must confess, it's it's a uh, not a very large counter. 2,000 crore market capitalization, currently trading at 1,536.9 or thereabouts. And uh, Gaurav from Mumbai is simply looking for a view on this one. Rajat, anything that you'd like to tell us about the charts that you see? Uh, do you see anything? In fact, it's down about 4% in trade today itself. If you don't like it, would you give us another option for uh, for my friend Gaurav to invest in? Well, uh, what I would say is that this is uh, on the run up to say 2600. Uh, it showed, uh, I think, something like 25 uh, circuits in a row. So this this is an operator driven counter, no doubt about it. So getting into this, you may not get an exit. So avoid this. Or uh, if you have to buy something at the moment, uh, if you are dying to buy, uh, what I would say that look for some safe counters. Uh, a little earlier, I think we discussed ICICI Bank or some other counter, anything, anything, any, anything that is fairly liquid. Say. Uh, any of the uh, any of the chemical stocks or pharmaceutical stocks, they are doing pretty well and they are pretty. Uh, one stock, if one is willing to hold for some time and looking for a good upside, is alkyl amine. But uh, uh, caveat has it that I personally hold some shares of alkyl amine in my portfolio. That's a disclosure from my son, uh, that... and the disclosure disclosure should be made because. I wish you a happy Friday 13th, both to the investor as well as both of you there. Yeah, thanks so much for the for the kind wishes. Uh, just want to clarify, what is the time frame that you're looking at, Rajat, on your trade? And thanks so much for that clarification, important one to make. I would say that my average cost of acquisition of uh, alkyl amine might be 9 rupees. 45, and then uh, there has been, I think, bonus or something, whatever. It, I have been holding it for more than two decades. So, um, <laughs> I would I would like to retire. <laughs> okay. All right. So, and maybe maybe once you do, you, you should continue to speak to us, um, you know, uh, on an ongoing basis and give us some more ideas to hold for two decades. Vineet, you as well. IEX is the counter that I'd like to ask you about, Vineet, next. And uh, we've got Karna, who's bought at prices of 177 or thereabouts. The stock is currently trading above that 218, making a decent profit. Uh, the stock has done reasonably well, up as much as 30%, despite the concerns that some people have raised about pricing and the future going forward on regulatory issues that have cropped up over the last year or so. On the fundamentals, though, would you continue to hold, Vineet? Absolutely. You know, if you go to the IEX and you watch the uh, rate fluctuations, in the day it is as low as 55 paise and uh, during the nights it goes up to as high as 8 bucks. So, you know, there is clear, uh, you know, disparity between generation and uh, your uh, transmission networks. Also, uh, you know, we are lacking uh, capacities for base load. So, until these things correct, I think IEX will be playing out very well. And uh, I think they've got a very good uh, runway ahead for them over the next two to three years. Yeah, practically a monopoly still. Uh, and that the challenge of which is what uh, some people had suggested would be problematic. But it's still a counter that has gained over 60% over the last one year. Devinder has got the next question talking about IRCTC. He's bought at levels of 952. He's got 32 shares. And he's um, it's, it's very close to the market price right now. It's not too far away. Is it uh, likely to face more pressure on the downside? Would you hold on to this, Rajat? Uh, he's not specified his time frame, so perhaps you can give us your view based on um, the longer term charts as well as what you're seeing in the near term. The IRCTC, IRCTC on weekly chart, uh, if you remember in 2021, this was a parabolic. In fact, 
when I teach uh, people, I show IRCTC as what happens after a parabolic. Even IEX was like that. But both IRCTC as well as IEX are now showing a saucer pattern. In that saucer pattern, more or less IRCTC has completed the saucer. And after that, there is a cup and handle formation also. Now, if it were to fall below 900, then one should exit. Otherwise, IRCTC may continue to be held because it's this time when lots of defense and other counters that have shown parabolics, including your Zomato, uh, 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 those stocks, when they suffer, these kind of stocks which have already gone through that painful periods may do, go sideways or could even go up. So IRCTC, I would say, uh, is a hold with a stock below 900 on closing price basis. Um, Vineet, this one is directed specifically at you and we've got Jitendra Dave who says that he's a small investor. He has highlighted a few stocks and I'm going to read them out to you. Strides Pharma, uh, Finolex Industries, Wellspun Living, Can Bank, Hint Copper, Spark. I don't know if there's any research that has gone into the selection of this list. Does anything stand out to you and what is the strategy that a small investor like Jitendra should employ in the current market? So I think I will go with the elimination first. I'll tell him that Spark is not the stock to be invested in. They are more into uh, product drug discovery and it will be a while before they get anything going. So, you know, we, if we omit them, we are left with four other counters. Uh, within that, uh, Hind Copper has a lot of promise. India is a copper deficit country and uh, you can buy into that. Strides Pharma is also a very good company. Pharma Space is really doing well and uh, we think Strides will also do well in that. Uh, I think the fourth company was, uh, can you just uh, update pull me on up. that? Yeah, I'm just trying to pull it up. Uh, it was Wellspun Living, yeah. Yeah, Wellspun Living, we are very, very constructive and positive. We believe that, uh, you know, good times are ahead of the company over the next couple of years. So definitely one that, so out of all these four or five stocks, if you ask me which are the top two plays, Wellspun Living and Hindustan Copper stand out clearly. Okay. Um, I, mu I must point out, there are a few questions that have come through that I've chosen to ignore because it's hard for me to ask my experts to give you a view on penny stocks. We generally don't take them. It's very hard to look at the fundamentals and even the technicals are probably not going to make any sense to you. Uh, CDSL is the next counter. Darshan wants to know about this. He's bought at a level of, uh, let's pull up the chart, at uh, 1,460. So he is seeing a loss, a small loss at this juncture. Um, he's wondering what the prospects are. He can hold, he says, till August 2025. Would you hold, uh, Rajat, based on that time frame, less than a year? Uh, one year is too, uh, too small a period for a stock that has appreciated over the last five years uh, nearly eight times or nine times because when the fall happens, it can even test the 200 week moving average, which is close to about 700. So if it is, if it is only one year, I would say make 1000 as your uh, stop loss and continue to hold on. Otherwise, what I would suggest is that this is a platform company and doing pretty well. They tom tom uh, uh, lots of uh, new investors coming in through Bajaj home finance thing and all that. Uh, so one can continue to hold on for longer period, like not just one year, maybe say five years or so, then you can get substantial appreciation out here as well. Okay. Uh, Sirma is the next counter that we're taking and one of the last counters that we're talking about, Sirma SGS Technology, uh, the stock is currently uh, trading higher by about 2% or thereabouts, with the market capitalization of 8,400. Anil John from Kollam in Kerala is asking about this. He's bought a level of 586, which is slightly elevated. On the fundamentals, Vineet, would you hold on? Uh, yeah, you know what, they're in the EMS space and although we were a little disappointed with their performance, but you know, they're doing some uh, re-juggling of their business model, adding new people, 
and you know we are seeing EMS coming to its own. So I would give it the benefit of doubt and continue to hold on to this stock. Very quick view on HUL because I've promised it. Um, Rajat on the charts, the buy price is 2,400. Samir from Kolkata is looking for a target and a stop loss that you would put on this. I would say that uh, Hindustan Lever is uh, best bought at current levels for a uh, longer term. If you have already purchased, then put a stop loss uh, below the uh, uh, below the 20 week moving uh, nine week moving average, which is around 2770 and continue to hold on. On the upside, if it crosses 3000, then 31 to about 3135 would be the target for you. Thanks so much for that view. Uh, well, gentlemen, that brings us to the end of this particular edition of Ask Profit. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, for answering all the questions that you did. Uh, absolute pleasure having you on the show and happy Friday the 13th to you and everybody tuning in. That brings us to the end of this edition of Ask Profit. Do stay tuned. Lots more coming up on NDTV Profit.